morning, glory, evening, grace, brethren, and sister, and let's have all of you back along with us here for this Sunday evening uh, p.m. service. Thank God for what he did for us this morning, allowing us to broadcast from our ascending church of a room, a Baptist in Ironsville, Alabama. And uh, so thank everybody for tuning in and uh, your prayers and support with that. Thank you for the live congregation that we had. And uh, let's do continue to take and pray for all these people. Like, uh, like I said, our pastor there who, uh, who has pneumonia and uh, maybe among other things as well, still running tests and all. He's got a, a number of things. I know that uh, that didn't look good on CT scans and things that they did. Like uh, he had like a. Uh, uh, something I think was I know was wrong with his lungs and his spleen and maybe a couple of other things and in a lot of pain. So take and pray for him. As well as my mother-in-law who uh, is already in a rehab center, but it officially starts therapy tomorrow. Uh, so pray that goes well and she's able to come home like a Friday or Saturday. And uh, I continue to pray for all these others that are uh, oh, that are in need. Those with physical needs, financial needs, emotional needs. Of course, my ear is uh, starting to clear up. I'm using hydrogen peroxide. That seems to have worked better than anything else. And so uh, that is starting to clear this up. It's not as bad as it was. It's still clogged, but kind of like a couple of days ago, it was like you were looking for much of anything in it. But it is starting to get uh, to get a bit better as, uh, as time goes on. So we thank the Lord for that. Just pray that it would uh, completely be healed and that the uh, Lord would touch us and uh, be with us. In a mighty, mighty way here this evening as we uh, finish out Psalm 16, a phenomenal psalm that we have here. And uh, pray one for another that God be with us in this upcoming week and the Lord would touch us and help us. Our Lord, we love you. Thank you for the unity of sin. Thank you, Father, that you've done all the blessings you've bestowed upon our hearts and upon our lives. God, the opportunity to come back and to gather in your name and for your grace and for your mercy. And we pray, Lord God, you just continue to be with us. Just continue to lift us up and help us and give us that which we need. Put your desires in our heart, Lord. Make us belong to you. Make us more like Christ is our prayer. Help us be holy. Help us have the right standards. And help us go on for your honor and glory and have that Christian character and be the shining light, the example that we ought to be. I pray you touch hearts and souls. Save those that are lost. Those that are lost, pray you convict them and save them. Those discouraged, encourage them. Those backslid, reclaim them. Touch them and help them, Lord, we pray. Just give us that which we need, Lord. We'll honor you in all things. Be with all these on the bed of affliction. These that need help. Touch them, I pray, like our pastor, my mother-in-law, my ear, and all these other ones, Lord, we pray. Just help each and every heart. And so we pray this upcoming week and be with us tonight. Of course, in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. And amen. So if you've got a Bible, to go ahead and turn to chapter number uh, 16 of Psalm. Of course, just uh, really the same announcements uh, with our ministry here. We'll be back here Tuesday going back to the Old Testament survey class. Thursday, uh, uh, the Minor Prophets still in the book of Joel. Then Friday, we'll continue through the book of Job. And uh, also, we will be going street preaching one day this week, probably Tuesday, maybe tomorrow, but at least by Tuesday. Uh, so go ahead and be praying for us for that, because tomorrow, Tuesday, we'll be going out street preaching again here in downtown Warrior. Uh, so pray for us also in uh, in that aspect as well. And uh, something that the Lord put on our heart, if you want us to pray about it, uh, as far as going street preaching goes, I uh, kind of I kind of thought uh, this morning about uh, some of these uh, communities around here in central Alabama that don't have a Bible preaching church. And so uh, may you pray for us there uh, about street preaching kind of in that area. That's actually what we were planning to do before we were going to upstate New York, what our kind of mindset was to do about a year ago. We were going to like start a church like in Clay County like or, uh, or, uh, or somewhere around there kind of east of here that don't have an independent Baptist church. Like Clay County particularly, that's also right beside Talladega where they have a big different blind school in Alabama. Uh, but we might go street preaching there, though. It's like about an hour and a half drive so from here, but just something that the Lord laid on our hearts maybe to do with the time being here, especially if we end up having to stay in Central Alabama through the spring. And so we'll just pray for us and uh, that aspect. But some people do that. I know, like I know some other, like you know, some other uh, church planners and whatnot that do that in a number of communities. And so if that be the Lord's will, you know, that's just something we could take our time to do. Amen. So uh, let's just pray for us. And uh, thank God for the heart that we have that we're able to stay busy for him. This is actually now the 15th time that I've preached in 15 days. And so once again, I thank the Lord for helping me, for giving me the strength to do this. Like going all the way back to last week, you know, when we had our revival and like uh, me, you know, preaching at our church this past Wednesday night and all of the ministry that we have here. And so I uh, thank the Lord for helping me. Thank the Lord for touching my uh you know, even though I've had a clogged ear, I was still able to preach, so we praise God for that. And now going back down to Psalm 16, starting here in, uh, in uh, verse number 5, being up in verse number 5, it says, The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot, the lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. 
Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. And now continuing our uh, a thought from this morning in Psalm 16, a meditation of trust in times of idolatry. Lord, I pray that a blessing to your reading of your word. Heaven says we try to preach house by the cross, remove all resentment, remove all resentment, every stumbling block, every demon of hell. Just give us clarity, thought, clarity of mind and preach us. Touch my ear, Lord, I plead the blood this left ear that's been clogged. I pray it continue to get better. But you know, if I have to bear it, then Lord, I will. Just help us be for you and you alone, Lord. You know, we stand in need of you. It's that which we need. Help hearts and souls out there. We pray for it. In Christ's blessed name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And so our, uh, we started here this morning uh, with this thoughts here uh, and our first point, which covered uh, verses uh, 1 to 4, was uh, cry to God for preservation. Cry to God for preservation. That was verses 1 to 4. And now we come here to uh, number 2, to uh, uh, point number 2, starting in verse number 5. It says, uh, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup that maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. And so point number two, confidence in God, verses five to seven. Confidence in God. Because we can have that confidence in God, just like the Lord Jesus Christ had here, as we said this morning. This is also a messianic psalm. It's, uh, it's you know, it's quite amazing how the Bible really just shows the uh, the supernatural uh, power, like of the Word of God here. How this psalm here, we can see how it is, uh, how it is like the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, whenever he, uh, whenever uh, you know, he was get, after whenever he died on the cross for us, and then also how we are to live a holy life, walking with Him here in an ungodly world. But like Jesus here had this kind of confidence, you know, like in the Lord, like he said, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance, you know, and of my cup, like he prayed, and, you know, like in the Garden of Gethsemane, made this cup pass from me, yet, you know, he still knew that God had, you know, that purpose for him to die on the cross, you know, for him to inherit, you know, people, his people there. And how wonderful that is, how the Lord Christ, you know, had that type of confidence in the Lord, how we can also have that same type of confidence, you know, in God. Like he says there, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup, like a letter right here, a desire to do the will of God, just like Jesus there. That was, you know, that was the only reason that he came. You know, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to do the Lord's will. You know, he came to, you know, he came to save sinners for, uh, for us sinners to be saved. And to do wonderful things. And we should have that same desire, you know, to walk in the Lord's will. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse number 5. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. So I like the uh, the terminology here of, of going back to Psalm 5. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. So that was the Lord's purpose, he's saying here. He's, Jesus is saying, my God the Father is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup and all that I bear and all that I do. And we should be the same way. We should have that same type of heart. The Lord is our portion. The Lord is what we live for. We only desire to do his will. Like it says there, look at verse number five of Deuteronomy 15. Only, only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments, which I command thee this day. So that's got to be the only thing that we are about. See, I know like a lot of people in this day and time, you know, they call this, you know, they call this fanatical, you know, Christianity. But really, it's just faithful Christianity. It's revival Christianity. You know, it's real Christianity that will bring a revival. Exactly what we need here. Only, see, if thou carefully, see, you got to be careful about it. I was thinking about that earlier. That's probably why it was on my heart because I brought it, God brought that out to me in this message. You know, you got to carefully, carefully seek the will of God for your life. Carefully do it. You know, that's not something to, to be loose about. See, a person that really, really walks with God, you know, they're not loose about the things that they do in their life. You know, they're not careless. They're very careful. 
You know, they want the Lord's perfect will. See, that's the only type of will of God there is. It's the Lord's perfect will. You're either in the, in the will of God or you're not. Like, I, I haven't heard this preaching in a long time, but like, I remember like when, you know, when I was a younger man, like when I was a much, you know, a much, much younger man, you know, when I was, you know, like 12, 13, you know, maybe 14 or 15 years old, you know, like I heard some preachers say, you know, there are two types of will of God. There's the perfect will of God, and then there is the permissive will of God. But, you know, there is no such thing as the permissive will of God. That's not scriptural. That's nowhere in the Bible. You know, there's the perfect will of God, or there's nothing. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, you know, you're either seeking the kingdom of God first, you're doing what Deuteronomy uh, 15, 5 says here, you know, you're carefully hearkening unto the voice of the Lord thy God, or you're not. You know, there is no permissive will of God. You're in his will, or you're not in his will. And, you know, once again, I know it sounds awful repetitive, but that's a big problem, people, in this day and time. You know, with believers in this day and time, you know, even people in independent fundamental Baptist churches, you know, they know nothing about being in the perfect will of God. They never really fulfill what the Lord wants for their life. They never fully seek the Lord's will. They're careless in everything that they do. You know, they just don't have a heart for it. They don't have a heart for holy living. They don't have a heart for the will of God. You know, nowhere near close to having a heart for revival. You know, and that's why we have so many, you know, dead churches. You know, because we have people who are so caught up in secular activities. You know, people who consume themselves with, with everything that the world has. And they never seek the good Lord's will for their life. They never do it. But, you know, the Lord, though, that's where our portion is. You know, that's where our blessings are. That's where all the goodness of life comes from. Like our Proverbs 10.6. Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence cover at the mouth of the wicked. See, that's another good, another good text also, you know, for peace. It's the will of God for his people to have peace. You know, peace in their heart and peace in their life. Yes, you know, if you, you, know, if you live for God, you're going to have trials and temptations. You know, like we're going through the book of Job right now. You know, we often make references to the Apostle Paul and all that he faced in his life. But, you know, even those men and all those, and those uh, treacherous times, you know, they had peace in their heart. And, you know, eventually when those trials were over, you know, they had great peace in their life. You know, like Job, when his trial was over, you know, he had twice more than he had before. Because blessings are upon the head of the just. That's people who are in the will of God. People who are walking with God. But violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. You know, like look at all the violence that we have all over the world, especially now. You know, look at how crime rates have gone up, you know, so drastically. You know, how there's so much wickedness in everything. Because we have so few people who are walking in the Lord's will doing what the Lord would have us to do. You know, just like with Christ there in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, he prayed that that cup would pass from him. Because, you know, he had to die on the cross. He had to suffer. You know, he had to take all of that pain. You know, and like we just said, you know, you've got people, you know, who have lived before us, like the Apostle Paul. You know, then we have like other, you know, other people who were persecuted, like in the early, you know, in the earlier church from the Bible times. And, you know, that time, you know, directly after the Bible, you know, by Rome. And then, you know, like with Puritans and people, you know, of the Reformation, you know, who were persecuted. And like Baptists, you know, our Baptist forefathers, whenever they came here to America, you know, like who were persecuted, like by Catholics, Native Americans, and Episcopalians. But look at what Peter said in 1 Peter 4, 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. It's an honor to suffer as a Christian. If you're going to suffer in something, suffer as a Christian, amen. You know, like I said, you know, like I just said, you know, there are people like who might call me a fanatic for the style of preaching that I do. You know, for the for the types of messages that I preach, you know, just like a, you know, the, you know these revival type messages about selling out to God and just being full, you know, full fledged for the Lord, doing what the Lord would have you to do. But you know, I'd rather people talk about me in that way, you know, than I would say I'm a hypocrite. You know, I'd rather be, 
you know, quote unquote, if you can, you know, I'd rather be too much in love with God and too much and, you know, allegedly too much on fire for God, too much of a, for a desire to have a revival, you know, than I would for somebody to call me a hypocrite, you know, somebody that doesn't live it. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about, you know, being some self-righteous Pharisee, you know, with your nose stuck up in the air better than everybody else. But, you know, somebody that just preaches the word of God the way I do, somebody that just desires a revival. But, you know, like people will, you know, they will shun you if you have standards. You know, you don't let your kids do things that, you know, that other people do. You know, like I... You know, like my wife told me a couple days ago, there were people talking about us because, you know, we don't let our daughter, you know, watch Disney movies and, uh, you know, have unicorns and, you know, watch Star Wars and Star Trek and, you know, all that stuff, you know, where the roots of it are witchcraft. <coughs> you know, you can, uh, you know, hear me preach more about that on, uh, I've got, I wrote an article about that and did a video study on it. Like about using a King James Bible, but living in NIV life. But, you know, I'd rather talk about me, you know, in that aspect, you know, than I would people, you know, than I would people call me a hypocrite. See, like it says, they're continuing on. It says, thou maintainest my lot. The Lord will defend and maintain what he has given to us. So, you know, that's what he did, you know, what he did with Jesus. You know, like Jesus was the Messiah. You know, yes, you know, Jesus did take all of that pain and he did die. But we know that that wasn't the end of it. You know, he rose again. You know, that is the gospel. Like if you've never been, you know, you've never been saved before. And you don't understand, you know, some of our standards. You don't understand everything that we're talking about. You know, you know, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Because he did. He died for you. He took all that pain and shame on the cross for you. And all you have to do is repent of your sins and ask the Lord to come into your heart and save you. You know, repent. You know, that means being sorry for your sins. You know, you're willing to change your life. You know, you can't live that life on your own, but you do it through the power of the Word of God. That's why we make so much of the Word of God. You know, the Lord helps you live that lifestyle after you get saved by you reading His Word and praying and people helping you. You know, like myself, we always, we leave our email right at the bottom of this. If you need more help with it, just email me. But, you know, accept Christ. If Christ is dealing with you, then, then uh, the Lord the Holy Ghost is dealing with you, then accept the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to save you and repent of your sins. And he will. He certainly will. So now continuing on here. It says, the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. This here is talking about boundaries. Like the lines that fell, like in Israel, because like Israel was a place with true religion. See, that's what Jesus, you know, was glad for that. He was glad that, you know, he was a man that lived, you know, true religion, not, you know, fake religion, not, not a cult, but true religion, pure religion. See, and that's let her be boundaries of true religion. Just like Jesus there, you know, he lived true religion. You know, that's what we're also supposed to live. Like a Jeremiah 6.16 gives us a good idea of that. You know, the Bible, you know, that verse. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Like a lot of these progressives, you know, newly evangelicals. You know, they say, well, we need a new way. We need something better. How is it better? And just because it's new certainly doesn't mean it's right. You know, we find that even in the Old Testament here. See, that was the problem of the Israelites. You know, they wanted a new way. They wanted, you know, they didn't want just the old law, you know, from, you know, from the Pentateuch. They wanted something new. But Jeremiah said, you know, standing in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? You know, like, like we use that terminology, old time religion, because, you know, that's what works. You know, like I said, like the preaching that I'm doing now, you know, it's nothing new. It's really old fashioned preaching. You know, I, like, like I often say, you know, you go back, you really can't hear them preach because they didn't have recording device to hear them preach. But, you know, you study the lives, 
you know, you study the lives that they live, like of George Whitfield and John and Charles Wesley and George Mueller and, and Charles Spurgeon and those great men that God used. You know, they were men that had standards. They were men who gave God everything they had, you know, every waking hour. You know, they were men, you know, who prayed several hours a day, like the Holy Club, George Whitfield and John and Charles Wesley. They literally prayed once every hour. Like George Mueller, he was a man who prayed about every aspect of his life, like we said this morning. You know, those were men who lived it. You shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Nah, Judah didn't walk therein and Judah lost their land. Because it doesn't work. You know, like we just said, I know, like even here, you know, in central Alabama, you find a lot of these newly evangelical churches with all this Christian rock music and, you know, not a lot of preaching, but just a bunch of entertainment and everything. And you can get a big crowd in with that, but nobody's life's going to be changed. You know, there's nobody getting any help out of that. There's no lives changed out of that. You know, people, you know, go to those churches, but their lives never change. You know, they just continue on, you know, living the same life that they were before. So, I, yeah, I have a goodly heritage. I'm glad of that. I mean, we have a goodly heritage. You know, I can certainly make that personal. You know, with, with my immediate family, with my parents, a father who prayed that God would call me to preach. You know, I go all the way back to my, you know, forefathers who were very good Christian people and our forefathers here in America. You know, and if you don't have a good, you know, if you don't have that type of heritage, you can't find that in your lineage, then start one, amen. That's the greatest thing that you can do is start it. Start it for your children so that they can have a goodly heritage. Because there's certainly nothing like having a goodly heritage. It's quite wonderful. Continuing on here in verse number seven, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. Letter C, desire for the truth. See, like you just see, like we just see here, like like how like expository preaching, you know, how it is just, you know, so wonderful, you know, not because we preach it or or somebody else invented it, but it's just the Bible, you know, you know, expository preaching, you know, that's just, that's just Bible, you know, you just see that in the Bible, like we were just saying here, like about how we preach and everything, you know, obviously Jesus, you know, he was happy that he had the counsel that he had, he had God the Father. But see, just like with us, you know, we should desire that as well. You know, the counsel that we have there from the word of God is desire for the truth. See, somebody that's really walking with God, you know, they don't get mad at Bible preaching. You know, they enjoy it. You know, yes, you know, I've heard preachers, you know, you know, that there were things that I allowed and like things that I mentioned, you know, just a few moments ago, like with my daughter. You know, those were things that I one time allowed in my life, but God convicted me of it. You know, the Lord convicted me of it because, you know, I heard other preachers preach about it. You know, the most of it. Some of that, you know, I just got from reading the Bible on my own and, you know, reading other commentaries and books and things. But, you know, most of it are things that I heard other preachers preach, you know, like when it comes to those standards. You know, and I'm very thankful for it. You know, like I said, you know, those were things that I had in my life, but I heard that preached. You know, and I heard it, you know, out of the word of God. You know, I heard those things, you know, come from the word of God, you know, when I got it right. Yeah, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night season. Like reigns there is talking about inward, inward, you know, your inward parts. You know, like John Wesley, like his quote, like from his commentary on this verse says, Inward thoughts and affections being inspired and moved by the Holy Spirit. See, of course, you know, that was certainly Jesus Christ. You know, he was a... You know, he was an individual, you know, who meditated, you know, who constantly meditated, you know, like on the Father's work and what God had him doing, just like we should. You know, our inward thoughts, our affections, you know, they should be inspired and moved by the Holy Spirit. You know, once again, you know, that's a mark. You know, that's a mark of somebody that has a strong walk with God. You know, somebody who hears good Bible preaching or, you know, they're studying the Bible. God convicts them of something. You know, they don't get, you know, they don't get mad, you know, they don't get mad and snarl up and, you know, upset about that. You know, they accept it. You know, they get it right. Like Matthew 6, 21, where your treasure is, that will your heart be also. You know, where's your heart at? You know, are we meditating on the on God? Are we letting the Holy Spirit lead and guide us? Proverbs 4, 23.
Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. See, certainly there, we should always keep our heart. Keep our heart with all diligence, you know, in the word of God, in prayer. Because out of it are the issues of life. You know, we have to stay strong in the Lord. Strong in prayer, strong in his word. Proverbs 23, 26. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. It's like observe the ways of wisdom. Give God your heart and go in his way of wisdom. Now continuing on here to verse uh, verses 8 to 11. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt shew me the path of life and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So we see here our first point was cry to God for preservation. Number two, confidence in God. And now number three, corruption isn't part of the holy. You know, it certainly wasn't a part of Jesus Christ's life. He was, uh, he was completely unblemished. He was, uh, he was perfect. Didn't have a sin nature because he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, not by a man. But, you know, once again, very applicable in our own lives. You know, we should not. You know, we should not let corruption be a part of our life. You know, we are to be holy. We are to be a set-apart people. Now, we'll see here, you know, how we do that. Corruption isn't part of the holy. Like verse number eight, starting it off, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. You know, that goes right along what we said this morning about, you know, God being the Lord of our life. Like we use that terminology, Lord. You know, the Lord is supposed to be the Lord of our life. You know, overseeing everything. You know, overseeing everything that we do. Like that, obviously, like uh, this text, this uh, verse here, like I have set the Lord always before me because it's on my right hand. And then verse number 11, they're talking about, uh, are talking about uh, those things as well. Like Peter quoted, uh, quoted this in Acts 2.25, part of the psalm there for, David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I should not be moved. Because that obviously was the Lord Jesus Christ as well. You know, he was, uh, he, was at, he was at the right hand of God the Father, and thank God that he never moved. Because the Lord is always before me. Deuteronomy 4.29. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. They like once again, you see their expository preaching working well. Just going right on the things that we looked at before about seeking the will of God for our life. See, we're to seek the Lord thy God because you will find him if you seek him. But, Seek it with all thy heart and with all thy soul. See, like, once again, you know, that's another thing that, uh, another thing that people, especially people in the Bible, will, you know, lose, you know, use too loosely. You know, use very loosely, you know, like about the Lord. Like they say, well, the Lord will always be with me. You know, the Lord will be with me everywhere I go. You know, the Lord is guiding, you know, like you hear people say that, you know, like the Lord, the Lord is guiding my path. You know, the Lord will guide my path. Well, there's really a condition on that says, Thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. See, serving God with a whole heart, you know, wholeheartedly doing what the Lord would have you to do. So letter A, the Lord is always before me. And now letter B, I shall not be moved. Then the latter part of verse number eight, because letter B, that's simply letter B. I shall not be moved. You know, I will continue on, you know, in the Lord's way. I won't be moved from the word of God. I won't be moved from holy living. You know, nobody will be able to, nobody will be able to steer me away from what the Lord wants me to do. 1 Corinthians 15, 58.
Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. See, we're busy for the Lord, walking in God's will, doing what he would have us to do, and we are immovable. You know, nobody can move us away from what God wants us to do. Like we said, that was actually last week. Like last Sunday, you know, like when I mentioned that, like, law, especially lost people, you know, and even some carnal Christians, you know, some carnal, you know, worldly, you know, just half-hearted or, you know, 10% Christians, you know, would be a better term for a lot of them. You know, they, they don't understand, you know, whenever we do things, you know, you know, especially preachers, you know, really possibly any Christian, you know, if any Christian, you know, moves to a new area or, you know, they have a career change or, or, you know, uh, as we said, you know, they're raising their kids for the glory of God, you know, and they won't let their kids do certain things. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of lost people and even some carnal Christians, you know, like, you know, like with me, even me and my wife, you know, that they won't understand, like whenever you go into full-time ministry, you know, like you uproot and, you know, move your family and do the things that you do. But, you know, we are to be unmovable in that anyway. You know, even though they don't understand it and they're not for us doing that, you know, we are not moved, you know, in the will of God. You know, we do what the Lord would have us to do, seeking his perfect will. It's then verse number nine. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. See, we can be glad in the Lord, just like the Lord Jesus Christ was, because, you know, he was, you know, Jesus knew that Christ, that God was going to raise him, that, you know, you know, that the Lord, you know, was going to raise him up. You know, just like us, you know, we're to be a glad people. You know, our glory, you know, rejoices. We rejoice in the Lord. Psalm 57, 8. Awake up, my glory. Awake, sultry and harp. I myself will awake early. See, that's something that a, that a real spiritual Christian will certainly do. You know, they're excited to get up in the morning to experience the glory of God. You know, to pray, to spend time in the Lord. You know, I do that often. You know, I get up very early sometimes, like 4 o'clock in the morning. Like I know a lot of people, you know, they look at the lives that we live as Christians. You know, especially us, you know, more conservative, you know, type people. You know, they, they, they don't understand, you know, the lives that we live. And, uh, you know, when they, they see, you know, the life that we live as just being a life of rules and standards, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, you can probably tell from, from me, you know, I've got, I've got joy. You know, I'm happy. I'm glad. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not sad. You know, like a lot of people who just look at the lives that we live, you know, as Bible-believing Christians, it's just a bunch of, you know, conservative people who have to live by rules and, and by regulations. You know, there's no joy in that. Oh, yes, there is. You know, we have real joy. You know, we've got an undisturbed peace. You know, I'm very happy. I'm very, very joyous. You know, I got, you know, that's just how the Lord works. You know, that's just joy and peace that comes from God. You know, like every single time I took a step of faith and, you know, got something out of my life. You know, I've had more joy from it. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, sad with a sad face, you know, mad because I can't do this or, you know, I can't do that. Nah, you know, you have a strong walk with God. You know, you love the Word of God. You stay in prayer. There's joy in it, you know, extreme joy, wonderful joy. You know, it's, it's a joy you can't get from the world. It's from God. Like Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's just joy. You know, joy that we have in the Holy Ghost. Joy that we have from God. You know, because we have a relationship with Him. You know, that's what the, you know, that's what the Song of Solomon, you know, was all about. You know, you have one wife and you're very, very faithful to your wife. You know, you have joy in that. You know, you're not, you know, you're not sad because, you know, you can't look at other women or, or look at another man. But, you know, happy with that one person, just like with God, it's a joyous relationship. You know, lots of joy and peace from it. You know, I'm glad and I'm rejoicing. And we can rest in hope. It says, my flesh also shall rest in hope, for thou will not leave my soul in hell. It's obviously Christ, you know, even, 
his flesh, you know, even his flesh, you know, wasn't corrupted, you know, whenever he was raised, whenever he was risen, you know, and same with us, you know, we can rest in that hope that we have from the Lord. For the Lord certainly isn't going to leave our souls in hell because we've been, we've been saved. You know, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. You know, we should, you know, we should avoid all of the corruption in this world because, you know, the Lord has saved us. He's made us clean. He's made us pure. And we can rest in that hope that we have from God. That he will always be with us. That he will never leave us or forsake us if we are continually seeking after him. And lastly, here in verse number 11, Thou wilt shew me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Obviously, Christ, you know, he went back to the right hand of the Father. But even for us as well, lastly, we are to be on the path of life. Letter E, be on the path of life. John 14, 19. It's like Jesus told them here. He said, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. Because obviously he was resurrected. He went back to the Father. But ye see me because I live. Ye shall live also. We can live because of what Christ did on the cross. You know, we can, you know, we can rest in that hope that we have an eternal home. Because whenever, you know, if, whenever we pass away or if we go by the rapture, you know, we will, we are going to eternally live. And here on the earth, John 10.10 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. See, it's not living by a bunch of rules and regulation. It's a more abundant life. You know, that's like David, like in Psalm 19, you know, Psalm 119. Even David there, when, when he lived under the law, he rejoiced in that law, being able to live in that law. You know, and now us even more so because we have the whole canon of the word of God. And Christ came that we might have life. That we might have it more abundantly. So if you're lost, the Lord certainly desires to save you. He died for everybody. And he wants to save you. And he'll give you that abundant life if you just invite him into your heart and you repent of your sins. You know, and like us as believers, you know, we need to stay on that firing line. Living that life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you honestly say that you live a life in the Lord Jesus Christ? Certainly hope so. That's what we all need to be doing, amen. That's what we all need to be doing, amen, to see the Lord move in our midst once again. Thank you so much for uh, for being with us here, uh, here uh, this on this uh, great Sunday, a great psalm that we were able to that we were able to get into there, kind of going into the last section of the uh, like of the uh, you know first book there of Psalm sixteen to forty one. Of course, I know we got quite a few left there before we get into the uh, the second book, but uh, Psalm sixteen, oh great great text there. So I encourage you to continue to read and study that throughout this upcoming week. Yeah, man, read a psalm a day. You know, that'll be a help and a blessing to you. You know, I honestly don't do that every day now, but I've done that before because, you know, I write commentaries and I read and study so much other things. So I don't necessarily read a psalm every day, but I still do a lot of all the things that I read. And it'll help you in the book of Psalms. Just do a phenomenal, phenomenal book, a book, uh, just a, a text, you know, a piece of literature like no other. So if we were helping a blessing to you this morning, certainly did help me once again, not because I preach it, but because it is the word of God and it is just a wonderful there. And, you know, it's just how the Word of God is, like we said this morning. You know, like I, I've, I've read and studied through the Psalms a number of numerous, numerous times. But, you know, it's just a book that just gets sweeter as the days go by. You know, as the days go by, our salvation gets sweeter. The Word of God gets sweeter. You know, and living for Him, it's just a sweet thing. You know, not at all in any bondage here. Not at all, you know, sad because we have these rules and regulations. But whenever you have that walk with God, there's just joy like nothing else, amen, just wonderful, wonderful joy, and so hopefully everybody be praying for us this upcoming week, like we said, probably going street preaching on Tuesday, and so pray for us there in downtown Warrior, thankful for the reception that we've got, we've not had anybody get mad at us or anything, everybody has gladly took a track, you know, we even had lots of people commend us for what we were doing, so we certainly do thank the good Lord for that, and I pray that God will continue to use us this upcoming week, of course, be, uh, be right back here on Tuesday, uh, going through Old Testament survey. I do be praying. Pray that our ear, if you're out there listening, to pray that my ear would get a bit better here. He said it has improved, but just pray with fully. It's not, it doesn't really hurt. It's just so annoying. You know, when you might even be able to tell a little bit, it kind of throws your thinking off. You know, when you have that going, you know, when you try to preach and all, it does kind of disturb your brain and disturb your concentration. You got, you know, like I said, it's clogged. You know, you have that continual ringing in it. So just pray for us that the Lord would help us with it. Amen. 
And uh, we'll certainly be praying for everybody this upcoming week. And I do pray for those that we mentioned, like our pastor, Brother Ken Taylor's in the hospital. My mother-in-law, pray that she come to this rehab. And I'll just pray one for another this upcoming week. You know, we don't know what, you know, what each other, what the other believers face. So let's do pray one for another. Pray we'd be encouraged and that the Lord would keep us. Amen. Our Father, we sure do love you. Thank you so much for another Lord's Day. Thank you so much for the opportunity to preach. And thank you for your great blessings, Lord God, and what people have done for us. And pray that we would just continue to be faithful and seek after you and follow after your will, Lord God. Give us a good week this upcoming week. May this be another one of those weeks, Lord God, where we get closer to having a revival, where the sparks of revival start to flur. Just bless your people with peace. Give us that which we need, Lord. Just help us, Lord God, in things that we face, the resentment, the discouragement that, uh, that a folk might face. Just help us get us out of our heart and out of our life. Just walk close to you, Lord God. Do what you have us to do. Be what you have us to be. But this as we street preach and all these on the bed of affliction, touch me up when we pray. Uh, brother, Pastor Brother Ken Taylor. And Sister Jeannie Tyler, and uh, the year that I have, Lord God, all the, all the needs among us, just help our dear listeners. Bless them, bless them, I pray, this upcoming week with a special blessing. We'll be careful to be all in all the praise. Now, the glory of God brings back the next point of time, Tuesday, we pray for us in Christ. Bless them, we do pray all these things. Amen. Now, thank you so much, folks, for being with us. I am Dr. Cooper. We'll see you Tuesday night.